Next on the list, we've got news here, courtesy of RA, and it features Nina Kravitz, somebody I've spoken about a few times here, especially concerning what's been happening with the in the war with the war in Ukraine, with obviously um Russia's invasion of Ukraine and all the horrible things that's been happening as the fallout of that. We're now in what the third month or something going on. You know, hundreds of hundreds of lives have been lost, maybe even thousands by this point. And yeah, it's just a terrible, terrible situation. And it feels like for whatever reason, Nina Kravitz is bearing an, I think, unfair brunt of this situation. Even though I understand where it's coming from, I think this headline is a little bit excessive. What's going on and what, why this is happening? It just feels a bit bizarre to me. But anyway, it continues. Nina Kravitz won't play free up and coming festivals in Europe and the USA. The, the Crave in The Hague, Movement Detroit and Dortmund's Polar Wissen have published statements confirming the news. So there she is. It says Nina Kravitz won't appear at free festivals. She was due to play in the coming weeks. The Crave in The Hague, the Movement Detroit and Dortmund's Polar Wissen um, have published statements in the past days confirming the news. While European festivals said that they made the decision, the movement put on the onus on Russian artists, none of them provided a reason. Okay, so one festival is saying that she doesn't want to go and two of the others are saying that they the one that pulled out. I think this, the truth lies somewhere in the middle. She probably decided she doesn't want to go and the festivals in an effort to kind of, you know, get some public love and to make themselves look at the good guy they decided to come out and say hey we decided to pull out of it too which is a bit slimy but it is what it is the news arrived after Kravitz posted a statement clarifying her position on the war in Ukraine and addressing her perceived silence. She has come under fierce criticism for some um, corners of the scene. I'm a musician and was never involved in supporting politicians or political parties, she wrote. Part of the criticism around Kravitz's perceived silence was based on her assumption that she still lives in Berlin, where freedom of speech is protected. Though she has lived in Berlin, in 2018 Peace Interview magazine, she said she was based in Moscow. Kravitz and the TRIPS band camp pages also say Moscow, as do the titles of several live streams recorded during the COVID-19 pandemic. People are going in in terms of analyzing and detailing all this stuff. Kravitz's statement has referenced the recent split between her label Trip and Clone Distribution. In Clone's statement published the day before, Kravitz found the surge said the decision was part ways, was partly motivated by Kravitz's pro-Putin views and her CCCP and USSR sentiments. Surge alludes to several historic incidents which can be taken as pro-Putin without going into detail. One of those is likely a photo taken at Coachella in 2014 showing Kravitz posing with a cardboard cutter of Vladimir Putin, who is holding a gun with a flower in a barrel. According to Kravitz's press officer, the flower in the gun is a symbol of peace since 1967, and the cutter was one of many at the festival. That's true. You can't start pinning stuff happening in 2014 because that's like the Trump stuff. Do you remember when all rappers were obsessed with Donald Trump? Then he becomes president and everyone realizes what a piece of shit he is, and they suddenly want to delete the fact that he was the... Uh, the person that everyone referenced in tracks and raps and stuff, people wanted to pose with him in pictures. Do you know what I mean? He was a bit of a cartoon um, figure that people kind of wanted to align themselves with. But then when they saw the actual real man in, in charge with some power, they realized how dangerous he could be. So to attribute some random person coming to a festival with a car of Vladimir Putin and being like, ha ha, he, he, he's a bad man in 2014 is different than what we're seeing now because we're seeing what that villain is actually like in real time and what kind of damage and pain he can cause people you know in a country that are just minding their business um because i guess whatever in it so th I, th that was i thought was an unfair thing to kind of pin on somebody in my opinion but hey um another controversial incident co concerned a meme tweeted by kravis people are getting their festival gears cancelled because of a meme so somehow you can get book. Maybe it's maybe that makes sense though. If you can get bookings for shit posting, right? Like a like a what's her name? Like a what's that girl's name, man? I was, I'll keep covering it. The ones with the massive boobies. Uh, oh, you know. I, anyway, I forgot her name. If you can shit post your way to bookings, then maybe you can shit post your way out of lineups. That's also maybe a thing. Maybe. Anyway, it says a meme tweet in 2016 of Vladimir Putin at a rave. The accompanying text reads, don't, un don't underestimate a Ruski. Is there a copy of it? Or has this been deleted? Let's see. Has she deleted this? Oh, is it still up there? Okay, still up there. So this is, a, this is the meme that, can, that, that people are saying. Come on, man. 
Anyway, um, read the post from the Crave. Okay, so this is from the Crave Festival. Dear visitors of Crave, we have to inform you that after long and intensive discussions, both internally and externally, we have decided that Nina Kravitz will not play the Crave Festival in 2022. The Crave. Nina Kravitz is unable to play movement this year. Stay tuned. So they've clearly said she was meant to play, but they didn't. She didn't because she didn't want to go. This sounds like more movement. And then uh, Polar Wisson says the following. Announcement regarding the Polar Wisson Festival. We would like to inform you that Nina Kravitz will not perform. The decision was made by us following a process of inner. So two two places are saying that they took the decision and one place is clearly putting the onus on Nina. Now, for me personally, I think this is OTT because where does this end? So she's basically being punished for not wanting to clarify her position when it comes to Putin. If we are to take a guess, we would say most likely... How likely is it she's pro or anti-Putin? She's probably most likely pro-Putin. But in terms of the war, in terms of what's going on in Ukraine, like that's what I was wondering. Can you be pro-Putin and also be against the war in Ukraine or the invasion, the illegal invasion of Russia into Ukraine? Probably can. Obviously, it doesn't make any sense because they're both intrinsically connected. But if you wanted to play those semantic games, you probably could somehow trick your brain into believing that Although you're pro-Putin and you think that he is, um, you know, um, the last bastion of trying to preserve the sovereignty of the USSR, whatever nonsense that you're thinking, you can't get away from the blood that's being spilled in Ukraine at the moment. The family's been absolutely torn apart. The untold misery has been brought upon those sisters, citizens, right, for no fault of their own. But then if you decide to say, I'm going to be apolitical and I'm not going to talk about politics at all, regardless of what's happening in my, in, in my country or the places I'm associated with, should you also be punished for that also? Because that's what I feel like she's kind of doing. She's basically saying, hey, I just don't want to talk about this for whatever reason. It's annoying. It's going to be frustrating, especially if you're a fan of hers and you're seeing what's going on there and you want her to make a stand. But is that enough to cancel somebody and basically take away their livelihood? I don't think so, personally, especially when you think about the dance music scene and you think about the amount of legitimate abusers out there who have been able to get away with it who've been able to still succeed who've been able to kind of um, dust themselves off and carry on even though they've left a trail of victims in their wake and no there was it doesn't feel like there was the same level of uproar and scrutiny being placed on them as is with this case it's just it just feels a bit strange like why are they coming extra hard at her and trying to make sure they kind of put a set an example in this case um because she's refusing to really get in and be super political about it like i think you should have the right to not want to comment especially if you're not going to say anything that's going to be constructive especially if you're not going to say nothing that's going to be received well why not just keep it to yourself especially if you believe the things that you believe i just don't what so they're trying they're trying to force her into complying into bending the knee into sharing the same political opinions and i just don't think that's healthy i think the whole reason why dance music is the way it is as people like to say it's political cool say it whatever it may be but i think one of the amazing things about it is that it can unite and unify people from different political leanings from different you know upbringings from different countries colors creeds sexual orientations whatever it may be we are all kind of united under this weird banner of dance music and electronic music and we find these weird safe spaces where we can kind of be ourselves and you know not talk about politics and just kind of enjoy music and feel the vibes and get high and drink and have a good time and dance and whatnot and go home that's basically what it should be about um so this kind of i get it on one side of things to bring attention to certain topics but i feel like this is going too far personally for me it just feels like a step too far they're essentially taking away her livelihood because she refuses to come out outright and say nothing you know negative against putin like let's be sensible we're all adults here we probably know that she's pro putin cool but can you be pro putin and still have a dj career you should be able to in the same way that you should be able to be a Tory and still have a DJ career. I'm pretty sure there's plenty of them people, especially in tech house. It feels like a lot of those guys are probably Tory on the sly, but you should be allowed to have a career if you don't have, if you don't share the political leanings of your industry that you're in, because it's not as if it's even the majority. For sure, there are people, you know, well, not Russia's not probably a good example because it's not as if like they have democratic voting there over there. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? the his last opposition leader is flopping in prison now for an unspecified amount of time so that's not exactly a um, democratic place in terms of voting and you know opponents or whatnot but 
I don't know. I just feel like this is too much. Maybe it's just me and I'm kind of being overly sympathetic about this. But I even said in my previous video, I'm, I know a lot of this has to do with her as a person. Because like I said before, she clearly comes across like a bitch and that's not being mean. But that just is what it is. I'm pretty sure she's the kind of person you wouldn't want to meet in real life. You'd kind of, if you were a fan of Nina Kravitz, you want to just enjoy her releases her DJ live streams, her Instagram, just from afar, you wouldn't want to try and meet her in person and try and shake her hand and say how much you love her. I don't think it'd go well, personally, especially if she was not in a good mood. I think she definitely radiates that kind of energy of somebody that kind of doesn't really give a fuck, which is fine, but, you know, it would definitely crush you if you're a fan of hers. That might play into it. I think that definitely plays into it. She's not a very uh, likable person, but, you know, so what? You're a piece of shit. So what? You're a dickhead. If your fans like you and people want to see you play, do it in it. And especially when it comes to these festivals, it feels like they're just cutting off their nose to spite their face. Like, you know, uh, local restaurants, food trucks, security team, people that are working in a bar, people that are going to work in a cloakroom, they're all going to be missing out on tips or income because such a big name is not able to come. And don't be, you know, don't get it twisted. She's a massive name. She fills out places. She sells tickets and stuff. She puts bums in seats. So it just feels a little bit, you know, it just feels a little bit performative for me, especially when you consider that most of the people that would go to these sort of things don't necessarily care. Most people that buy, I don't think that they do. I think it's a small niche of people in the scene who care about this stuff and pay attention to it. But I think the majority of people just like who they like. They watch them play. If they play a bad set, they won't come back again. But it it has real little to nothing to do with the amount of times they moan about their flights on Instagram or who they want to vote for. Or did they say, did they speak about this topic or this topic? I don't think people would actually care. I really don't. But maybe I'm in the wrong here. I don't know. Let me know in the comments down below what you think. I'd love to hear your thoughts.